Hey everybody, Big Anklevich here, podcaster, author, and carnivore. That's right, I'm a carnivore again. This is the first week of the 30-day carnivore challenge that I am doing with Marshall Latham. Uh, we both did updates on how our challenge is going. I think his are more interesting than mine just because he's a beginner and he's finding out just how it works. And uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. We're going to go ahead and head over and check those out. Let's see what Marshall and I have to say about our first week of going full carnivore. How did it work out? How is it going? And where is it going from here? Let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Big Anglovich here on day one of that carnivore challenge with me and Marshall Latham. And um, it's already making a huge difference. I can't remember the last time I went a whole morning without going and getting soda. I'm such a freaking soda addict. And um, yeah, that's, that's already saved me a lot of money and not wasted on soda. Uh, and you know, that was good. I had a lot, I'll have to say a lot of temptation. I just wanted to, to get one of those, you know, you, it's like I can taste it in the back of my mouth just saying, come on, go get some. Um, but I managed to uh, defeat that. I had, you know, bacon and eggs for breakfast. And then I had just a thing of salted ground beef, just a big container of it, you know, it was ground beef. That's the cheapest way to uh, get meat, I think, is just the big chub of ground beef. That's what they, I think that's what they call those tubes, those big plastic tubes that are just full of meat, a chub. And um, yeah, I've got uh, a couple of those in my uh, fridge and I just fried those up and I took, I don't know, a couple of pounds, I don't know how much it was, a pound and a half, something like that of, uh, of ground beef. And I, I wasn't even able to eat it all. I ate as much as I could until I was just stuffed and then I stopped. And... Um, I was getting, you know, you know how you get when you're first switching over. Maybe you don't. Maybe you haven't tried this. But when you're first switching over to uh, ketogenic, you get kind of a little weirdly achy kind of everywhere. And, and you're starting to get like a little bit of a headache. And um, I was definitely uh, having some of those issues today. But I uh, made it through. I didn't, I didn't give in. The, the motivation of uh, having to compete with Marshall was enough to keep me. I, I think just being able to save face <laughs> instead of being like, yeah, Marshall, I screwed up on the first day. How did you do? Uh, so I've made it through a day and uh, hopefully I'll make it through the whole month. 100% perfect. We'll see. Uh, Marshall is here and he also made a video talking about his first day. Let's check it out. Hey, it's Marshall Latham here on the day one of the carnivore challenge that Big Anklevich challenged me to do. Uh, he was looking to get some inspiration, so we have a little competition going to see who can be the best carnivore. <laughs> I think he has the most experience at it. I wasn't quite sure of some of the, the rules and whatnot, so he, he gave me some tips and tricks and uh, what to have and what's okay to have kind of thing. So, I don't know, I think I'll be able to pull it off. I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't have enough meat. You know, the prices have gone up so much for, for beef and everything else, but there's lots of options. And if I just don't eat a lot every day, then I won't have to have so much to worry about. So today I did pretty good. I had uh, scrambled eggs with some bacon bits, not the hard crusty ones, but the good actual bacon bits in there and some cheese. So I had that for breakfast. And then I brought to work with me some, uh, a, a little piece of steak from last night and a couple pieces of chicken. That's what I had for lunch. And then I also had some taco meat that my wife had made a couple days ago. So I brought that. Hey, it's starting to rain. <laughs> Sorry about my eye. It's a little puffy. I don't know why. Just uh, earlier today, it started getting puffy. I don't think that has anything to do with uh, eating as a carnivore. So... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of all I'm going to eat today. Oh, I did have some jerky too that I brought with me. Um, so I'm just going to eat two meals a day, just eat a good breakfast and have lunch and maybe, you know, some little snacks or something to have while I'm at work and then don't eat dinner 
because then I don't need another meal of meat to eat. So yeah, day one's gone pretty well. Not Nothing big to report. I don't feel deprived of anything. So that's good. We got day one. Well, it, it's not in the books, but essentially I accomplished everything I wanted to. I'm not going to eat anything else today. Just drinking lots of water and all that good stuff. So I think that's all I have to say about that. And I'll be back tomorrow, I guess, to, to let you know how I'm doing. All right, so there you go. That's Marshall's uh, take on his first day. Um, we're going to keep going. Let's see how this goes. Let's go on over to day two. Hey, everybody. Uh, so it's day two of the Carnivore Challenge with Marshall Latham. Uh, it was a good day for me today. I didn't eat anything that I shouldn't. And I'm going pretty hardcore this time around. I'm not, I'm not having any dairy products. I'm going full meat uh, and eggs only. Um, and uh, I think I'm doing pretty good. This morning I had bacon and eggs for breakfast. And weirdly, I found myself full really quickly. Um, now, I have been trying to have more butter with things, and I, I think that may be, uh, have something to do with it. But yeah, I found myself with most of my breakfast, uh, I was unable to eat it. And so I packed it away, and I took it with me to work, and I ate it at work. And, uh, and I ate a little, the, the little bit of, um, ground beef that was left over, uh, from yesterday as well. And that was my day today. And, uh, it was, uh, was a good day. Uh, let's send it over to Marshall Latham and see how he did. Hello, everybody. Marshall Latham here on day two, count it two, of the carnivore challenge that Big Angovich has challenged me to. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get past ten. I can't put ten fingers up, and I can't do that. I can't do actually more than five because I have to hold the phone up. So we'll have to find creative ways for other days. Uh, the carnivore challenge is going pretty well today. Uh, we slept in a little bit this morning on purpose and uh, came into work. Uh, so I had prepared some hard-boiled eggs. So I had three of those, and then I had about six or seven uh, sausage links that we had cooked up the night before also. So my wife's helping me out with some of that preparation stuff, and that, that's been a big help for that. Uh, let's see. what. And then for lunch, I had two... Since it was day two, I had two Costco hot dogs. Uh, I don't know, are hot dogs good for a carnivore diet? That There is processed meat in there and preservatives, I'm sure, and that kind of stuff. So it's probably not pure carnivore, but hey, it's good enough for me. I just uh, melted some cheese over the top of those, didn't have a bun or anything like that. But that worked out really well. I've had that before. And I, I had some almonds throughout the day as a snack. Not too many. Oh, and I have to admit, I did have two almonds last night after I had recorded. Or no, it's not two. I had about three or four almonds last night. Just to, to keep it honest. Uh, I don't know, carnivore is going pretty well. Uh, Big had mentioned that uh, the biggest thing for him is that he wasn't drinking soda in the morning. Uh, which is really good because that's not good for you. I haven't been drinking soda every morning, but I have been drinking soda since the beginning of the year. And so to not drink soda hasn't been that big of a deal because if you remember, I was doing that. Well, you probably don't remember hearing this, but in October I decided I wasn't going to drink any soda till the end of the year, and I didn't. So three months of not drinking any soda. It's not that hard to do. You just have to put your mind to it and plan around it and not get put yourself in a situation where you're going to be tempted to have some sodas. I mean, the temptation is always there. You just have to stand up to it. But yeah, it's going pretty well so far. Uh, that's my report for today. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. All right. So there you go. That's day two for the both of us. Looks like it's, uh, it's going well. Let's see if we can keep that up. Okay, here's day three of the Carnivore Challenge with Marshall Latham. And uh, it's another good day. Um, I made it through. It's great to have this motivation. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know what the why I couldn't summon it otherwise, but now that I got it, I really feel like I'm I'm, I'm cruising. And um, yeah, today I didn't uh, mess up again. I just had I had steak for breakfast. I've had the steak sitting in the fridge for a while. I keep you know I'm I'm getting food for I'm gonna eat good, and then of course I don't eat good, and so the steak just sits there, and it's been there for a while. So I cooked that up, and I had that for breakfast. And that was pretty good. I ate uh, a lot of butter with it, which made me quite full. And then uh, for dinner, I had more of the ground beef that I cooked up for this week. I had a five pound chub of ground beef that I cooked up and I'm still working my way through it. I, I still got plenty more too, <laughs> where that comes from. So I probably won't be through it, I don't know, until Monday probably. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's how I did today. I did pretty well. Still at 100 points. No, haven't been docked any points yet. And uh, let's see how Marshall Latham did today. Hey there, everybody. This is Marshall Latham here for day three of the Carnivore Challenge uh, that I'm doing with Big Anklevich. And uh, today's been pretty good. I started out the day a little bit different. Instead of eggs, I had a uh, about a half of steak and some chicken. I'll have to talk to Big about that. My wife was saying that she's been reading up on the carnivore thing and she said that they don't eat chicken. And uh, which is strange to me. Is red meat all that's allowed for carnivores? Or can you eat chicken? I mean, come on, it's a meat. <laughs> so I guess I'll find out uh, from Big if eating chicken is considered bad form as a carnivore. But I had some this morning. And, uh, you know, I like eggs. I could eat eggs every day, any time of the day. But I thought I'd just be different and have some uh, steak and chicken for breakfast this morning. So that's what I did. And then for lunch, I had some pulled pork. Well, actually, it was just slow-cooked pork. Uh, my wife made some, but I asked Big Anklevich, I said, you know, my wife's making pulled pork. We usually have it you know, mixed with all the barbecue sauce and stuff like that. And asked him if, if that was included in this diet. And he said he'd allow it for me to do. But that uh, there, there's a lot of sugar in barbecue sauce. And that's kind of the, the point of carnivores to get away from the sugars and the, the carbs and all that kind of stuff. And so... I decided to go without the barbecue sauce, even though Big said he'd allow it. Uh, I figured I might as well, if I'm going to go carnivore, I might as well do it uh, the way that it's supposed to be. So I'm doing, uh, so I just had some slow cooked pork that my wife set aside before she had the barbecue sauce. And uh, I have some extra to have another day, so that'll be good. That'll be another meal for another day also. Uh, with that, I had some cottage cheese, and then throughout the day, I had some uh, slices of ham and some slices of cheese that I had with lunch, but also after lunch and things like that. Just more of a snack kind of thing. But I have to tell you, last night, going home, you know, I've decided not to have dinner uh, during this, even though that's really not part of the challenge that Big and I are doing. I just decided, well... I don't have to eat three meals a day. I can just have two meals a day and call it good and all that good stuff. So, so I go home and, you know, we had the pulled, they had the pulled pork with the barbecue sauce and everything. But when we have pulled pork, my wife always makes these really, really, really good rolls. And I love these rolls. They're so good. And, you know, you just make a sandwich out of it. And... So I was really tempted. I really wanted to have one of those rolls. Uh, but I, I was able to stop myself. Uh, I didn't want to get any demerits. I didn't want to, to give in to temptation. So I was able to avoid eating the rolls. But I can say it was not easy because that's good stuff. It, it was you know bad enough the night before last. Oh, there goes a the police car. There you go. <laughs> this is the third time I'm recording, so I'm not going to stop for that. Uh, let's see, what was I telling you? Oh yeah, the night before last I went home and they were eating breadsticks and spaghetti sauce and these really good breadsticks that my wife makes. You know, you got the the dough and everything and then you put butter and garlic and 
uh, some Parmesan cheese on the top. Oh, it's so good. And they were just chowing down on the, the breadsticks with spaghetti sauce. And I'm like, man, you're not making this easy for me. And I told them not to worry about what they're cooking. But <laughs> those temptations are there. And I just, I told Big that I'm just going to have to go home later in the day when they're done eating and it's not out there for me to see. Um, so yeah, there's temptations out there and it's, it's hard a little bit, you know, people brought in donuts today for St. Patrick's day. And I thought, Oh, that sounds pretty good. I'll join them in having a donut. And I'm like, Oh, nope. I'm doing carnivore for 30 days. So I can't have a donut, uh, which is good. I don't need a donut. Yeah. I mean, just look at me. You can tell I don't need a donut. <laughs> uh, so there was more that I was going to talk about, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, mostly about some of the temptations that I faced, um, but I've been able to overcome those things. And, you know, I have several more days to talk to you, so if I forget to talk about something, I can always talk about it tomorrow. Okay, so there you go. He's uh, he's doing really well as well. So it's good to hear we're all uh, kicking some butt, and we're going to keep that going. So let's, we'll go head over to day four and see how that went. Okay, it is day four of the carnivore challenge and uh, another good day, another perfect day. I'm still at 100 points. And um, what did I have today? I had steak again for breakfast. That was possibly an even older steak than the one that I ate yesterday. So it's a good thing I got that cooked up before it got really, you know, before it went bad. And what else? Um, I ate a lot of butter with my steak as well. My wife was uh, complaining. She's like, I, I'm i getting really grossed out. I'm having a hard time not getting too grossed out of you sitting there grabbing uh, forkfuls of butter to eat with your steak. But I think I have been eating way too little fat in the last while. So I think this is really making a difference. I used to... I, I was... Uh, eating so little fat that my skin was just super, super dry. Um, and now it's, it's not. I, uh, I just actually pointed that out to my wife yesterday. I, I said, look at my back, touch my back and feel what it feels like. And my cat really wants to play right now. Of course, she does that every night when I come home. So, uh, I guess everybody's been asleep for too long and she's like, Hey, play with me. Uh, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I had that, and then guess what? I had more of the ground beef that I cooked up for, uh, for dinner. Actually, I'm getting close. I think maybe tomorrow I'll finish it off, so we'll see. So, on that's day four. Let's see how Marshall Latham did. Hey, everybody. It's Marshall again. I'm here to talk about day four of the Carnivore Challenge with Big Anklevich. And started off today, I brought uh, three hard-boiled eggs, and three sausage patties to work uh, for breakfast. I got a late start, and my plan was to eat them at work, but as soon as I got there, things started going. I had brought some uh, taco meat to eat as a snack, and that ended up being what I had for breakfast because that's all I had time for. So I mixed some sour cream in there and had the taco meat, and it actually held my hunger uh, for quite a bit. So that was good. Uh, then for lunch, I had, what did I have for lunch? <laughs> oh, I had my famous cheeseburgers, which is uh, bacon cheeseburgers. So they were uh, burgers, you know, and then I had cooked up some bacon last night. So I, I put bacon on the burgers. And then instead of using bread for the buns, I just used two pieces of cheddar cheese cut thick and made that into my bun, essentially, what, what I could hold on to with my hand. And I used to do that quite a bit when I was sort of doing carnivore before. And so, yeah, that's a, it's a good tasting meal. So I had two burgers with uh, cheese buns and bacon in them, and they tasted really good. Uh, the only thing is, I did eat them cold, so I had to have water because it gets kind of dry eating them that way. Uh, I never did eat the hard-boiled eggs that I brought, but later on in the day, I did have some sausage. 
Uh, so that was a good afternoon snack to have. And then, man, I got home. Remember, I talked about temptations yesterday. My wife was making pizza for the family to eat. And, man, that, that was hard to pass up, too. I, I tried to do my own thing. I tried to... Uh, I put a bunch of pepperoni on a plate, put some cheese over the top of it, and melted it in the microwave and kind of cut it up into sections and ate that. And that pretty much turned out pretty well. I, I enjoyed that. I did end up sneaking some of the top. It was just pepperoni and cheese on the pizza. Well, and sauce. So I, I did later on because I really wanted to grab one of those pieces of pizza and eat it. But so I did grab the tops off of them and I ate a couple pieces of pizza, you know, small squares of pizza, but just the cheese and the pepperoni. And I guess I had a little bit of sauce on those as well, but I didn't eat the crust. I threw those in the garbage. Um, so I did have dinner tonight, which is different than what I typically do, but you do what you got to do. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm not hungry anymore, so that's all good. So yeah, it's it gets a little hard to overcome those temptations, things that I wouldn't have thought twice about eating last week. I'm having to make all these decisions on what I'm gonna eat. Um, but that's what this is all about, right? This is why we challenge ourselves. So tomorrow I'll be home all day. Well, I'll be doing a few things out and about, but it's the weekend, so I'll be at home all day. So I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit harder for me, but I know I can do it. So I'll report again tomorrow. Talk to you later. Okay. Well, there you go. Thanks, Marshall. All right. We'll see you again on day five. Okay. It is day five. And it was a long day today. Uh, got up this morning and my wife wanted to do some stuff in the backyard. We got the shed uh, a couple of weeks ago that we needed to put together. And... So we went out to put it together and we discovered that we only had one of the two boxes. It's supposed to be a two box thing. And when we bought it, we only got one of them. We didn't know. So we had to go back to Costco and we spent all this time doing that. I did get a sausage, a not a sausage, what are they, a hot dog at Costco to eat. But, you know, they're not the, the normal hot dog. It's a little fancier, a little more high end hot dog. And they're super long. Uh, you know, you like the long hot dogs. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. And then we came back and um, we started working out in the backyard trying to assemble this thing. And oh my gosh, this thing was way harder than I thought it could possibly be. We worked on this thing for hours and uh, still not done we're gonna have to work on it more we're gonna have to finish it tomorrow we got like the walls up but not the roof the thing could you know get blown over real easy at any time um but yeah i had that hot dog uh and that was all i had i think uh i didn't have anything until we were done um and uh when we were done uh i had some uh, some steak. I had, uh, one last steak left or one last package of steak. It was actually two steaks. And I had those for my dinner, cooked them up in the air fryer and I had those. And, uh, yeah, that's all I've had that. And I had a lot of water because it was hot out there and miserable. <laughs> so, uh, that's how I did today. Let's see how Marshall Latham did. Hey everybody. It's Marshall Latham again. I guess uh, I'm reporting on day five of the carnivore challenge with Big Anklevich. Uh It's actually day six right now. I forgot to, well, I didn't really have a chance to record yesterday. So I'm recording now for yesterday. I started out the day with a huge omelet with uh, some cut up steak in it and five eggs and some cheese and ate that up uh, in the morning. And I'll tell you what, that did fill me up quite a bit. I wasn't hungry around lunchtime. I'm like, oh, I should go eat something. I'm like, well, I'm not that hungry. There's no reason to go eat something. Uh, later on for dinner, I did have a couple uh, hot dogs, uh, those big Costco dogs with 
uh, cheese melted on top of it like I had the other day. Uh, I guess I had some jerky for snacks and stuff like that. But uh, that was about it because that omelet really filled me up. Uh, so I was pretty content for the rest of the day. I probably could have gone without eating anything else, but uh, I decided to, to go ahead and have the, the hot dogs uh, in the evening. All right, there you go. Thanks for that report, Marshall. So we're doing good and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everybody. Okay, it's day six and that freaking shed, man, took us another like rest of the day today to get that put together, but it's done. Uh, so <laughs> at least there's that. Um, Man, it was so much work. I couldn't believe it. Um, but at least today, uh, when I got up, I, got, I had myself some bacon and eggs uh, before going out, just so that I would be ready to deal with it. I am so tired. You wouldn't think that that would be the possible, but I mean, all I was doing was screwing things in. And yet my arms, ah, oh, they're so tired. I'm having a really hard time holding up this phone to do this video. My shoulders are burning right now. Uh, but yeah, um, I had uh, ground beef uh, fried up and, you know, salted for my dinner. Everybody else had other stuff, but uh, I didn't, you know, succumb to the temptation. I just looked at it and said, hmm, that's not for me. I only eat human food. And so, yeah, I, I'm doing good. Just eating meat and, uh, yeah, chugging along. All right. Uh, let's see what Marshall Latham did. Hello, it's Marshall Latham here again for day six. Get all six in there. Uh, day six of the carnivore challenge with Big Anklevich. Uh, it's going to be a 30-day challenge. It's only day six. <laughs> I'm kind of running out of ideas. I talked to Big about that a little bit. You know, one of the things that I'm missing in doing the carnivore diet is a variety of things to eat. Uh, there's only so much you can eat. Um, yeah, I've had pork. I've had uh, hamburgers. I've had steak. I've had uh, hot dogs and stuff like that. But after a while, it's it's just all meat, and it doesn't really matter what kind of meat. You just eat it, and it's kind of boring a little bit. Uh, so Big said that'll go away, that uh, I'll, I won't have any cravings for anything else, and that I should eat uh, for fuel and not for entertainment, which I get. And I, I'm not really craving... Uh, the bad stuff. I mean, yeah, there's some things like uh, yesterday, last night, we went to, a, I guess I should have talked about this on day five. Anyway, uh, last night we went to a, a church function and, and had a good time. And then at the end, you know, there's refreshments and there wasn't anything on the refreshments that I could eat. It was all cookies and, you know, goodies, you know, desserts type thing. Uh, I guess there were some deviled eggs that I probably could have got away with eating, but my wife had one and said it wasn't very good. So I'm like, oh, well, forget about that then. I don't need, and I wasn't hungry. So I didn't need to eat any cookies or cakes or anything like that. So that, that was all good. Um, but that kind of stuff is always out there. And every once in a while, I think on St. Patrick's Day, somebody, I, I, I already talked about that, but somebody brought donuts into work. I was like, oh, donuts. I should go eat donuts. I'm like, no, I don't need donuts. And if I'm learning anything by doing the carnivore diet, it's just about control. It's just about telling myself, no, it's about giving up or not giving up, uh, passing up on those things that aren't good for me. And whether I continue on with the carnivore diet after this 30 day challenge remains to be seen, but. I'll have learned a lot about control and willpower and things like that. Uh, so today, what did I eat? I had to run out to church real quick this morning uh, early. So I just grabbed, what did I have? Well, I just grabbed uh, a couple pieces of ham and a little bit of cheese and ate it in my car <laughs> on the way to church. 
Uh, later on, my wife had brought me some uh, jerky and a little thing of mozzarella cheese. And I had that uh, for lunch. Later on, like around one o'clock, I sliced up some uh, sausage, summer sausage, and some cheese and ate that. I took a picture of it, but I had eaten uh, some before I took the picture. Um, and so I had some of that. Uh, and then I wasn't going to eat anything for dinner, but my wife was cooking up some chicken strips. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, like it, it's frozen chicken strips. And she was cooking up some of those. I said, I'll make, make me about five of those. And I, so I had some of that. And then she also, she's being pretty, really supportive. Uh, for this for me. And so she cooked up some sausage that she had some ground sausage and mixed it with sour cream and uh, no <laughs> mixed it with cream cheese and uh, made a couple portions for me. I did sneak a little bit <laughs> out of there and ate a little bit of that tonight too. Cause it's, that's pretty good. Um, but I'll have that for the week going into next week. It's really pretty much the same thing. We've been eating a, well, it's the same thing. It's got the sausage and the uh, cream cheese in it, but it's also uh, cooked up with spaghetti squash. And we've been eating that for the last few months. I mean, not every day, but uh, a few times. So it's pretty much the same recipe that for that, but just without the spaghetti squash. So, you know, again, part of me says, well, is the spaghetti squash going to hurt me? <laughs> so, you know, there's still that little bit of like, come on, does it have to be this extreme, the carnivore diet? Can I take the principles of the print of the carnivore diet and still add some other things in like some fruit and some vegetables and stuff like that? I guess that's the thing I've missed the most doing this carnivore is the fruit. I used to have, a, you know, like a banana every day, um, you know, strawberries, grapes, anything like that, berries. Um, you know, I, I, I like fruit. I love fruit. And I understand there's carbohydrates in some fruit, but I don't know. It, it's a lot different than eating pasta or bread or anything like that. So, um, again, we'll, we'll see. The jury's still out on, on whether I'll uh, convert fully to this carnivore diet full, full on head, head. No, what's the, what's the term? Uh, full steam. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Uh, but Hey, I'm doing it for the 30 days. So I can make it through the challenge. No, no problem. And, uh, I'll, I'll have learned a lot along the way. All right. That's day six. Uh, these are getting a little bit longer than I wanted them to be. So I don't want to have Big Anklevich have to edit too much. So thanks, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be the, the day seven. So a full week on the carnivore diet. Okay. So there you go. Marshall's doing good, too. That's great. Uh, so there you have it. Um, carnivore challenge is kicking butt. Okay, day seven. That is Monday. And um, that's, we're coming to the end of the, the first full week of this carnivore challenge. And I am doing just fine. In fact, I'm doing better than I have in quite some time. I have stuck with the diet completely. Uh, I have not even had any dairy, which... That's a huge thing for me. It's funny because we got milk in the fridge and it's just sitting there. Like the kids and my wife don't drink very much of it. It was all me chugging that stuff. And so we've gone a whole week. We went grocery shopping this morning and we bought milk like we normally do. And then, you know, we, we went to put it in the fridge and the fridge was f still full of the, you know, we still had a full gallon we got two more gallons, and we have three gallons of milk sitting in the fridge. Uh, without me drinking it, who knows if we'll ever get through it. It's going to go sour, probably. But um, that's fine. I don't care. I'm doing good, and I'm feeling good. Um, I uh, 
Uh, today I had, we bought chorizo at the store. They had it for just 99 cents for a little tube of it. And I thought, you know what? I've heard plenty about chorizo. It's a big thing in Tex-Mex cooking down here. And so I thought I would give it a shot. Uh, I did read the ingredients. If you want to read the ingredients for what's in chorizo, it's kind of creepy when you think about it, but it tastes great. I put it into my eggs this morning and oh, my eggs were so good. It was like taco eggs or something. Oh, it was tasty. Um, so I had eggs and I had bacon. Uh, I wasn't able to finish all the bacon. I, I guess maybe because of the chorizo that filled me up a little bit. Um, so I took the, uh, what was left over with me to work and I had that at work uh, along with um, some uh, ground beef that I cooked and uh, I've been working my way through. And uh, yeah, that's what I had to eat today. Let's see what Marshall Latham did. Hey everybody, Marshall Latham here. Talk about day seven. I don't have enough fingers to put up. But day seven of the carnivore challenge with Big Anklevich. And yes, I did well again today. I was able to uh, stay on the, the carnivore diet. I had scrambled eggs this morning with some of that sausage and cream cheese that my wife had made up for me. And that was a good breakfast I ate on the way to work. And then for lunch, I didn't actually eat too much um, for lunch. I had some cottage cheese. I had uh, a couple pieces of chicken strips. Uh, there was something else that I ate. Oh, a little bit more of the, the sausage and cream cheese that didn't go into my eggs. And then I didn't really have anything until I came home. And then I uh, got home almost 7 o'clock and had another one of my cheese bacon burgers <laughs> with the cheese as the buns. Uh, the family was having hamburgers for dinner. So my wife made me some extra stuff for that. So I, I was able to take care of it today and do what needed to be done. So this is the full last, the first full week of the carnivore challenge and I'm doing okay. I'm doing good on it. I feel good about finishing off these 30 days and hopefully I can stay on track. Tomorrow we're gonna go to a movie and I'm sure we're gonna get popcorn but that's not something that I can partake in. So we'll have to see what I come up with for that tomorrow. But yep, doing good. I'll uh, keep it up and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, so there you go. That's Marshall. That's day seven. That's the end of the first full week of this carnivore challenge. We're both uh, still going 100%, 100 points. Um, we may have we may really have to uh extend this thing i think and um make it uh go on for several months because somebody's got to win we can't compete and not have somebody win that's can't have a tie what is this soccer come on uh <laughs> i love soccer by the way so that's 100 percent a joke okay so there you go the first seven days and have to say that it has been a pretty big success so far. For me, uh, I've, I've gotten back on track, which is what I was looking to do. Uh, I, for some reason, just could not do it before, but I challenging Marshall gave me the motivation that I needed to get back on track and to really go for it. And I'm really excited about that. It's, it's gone pretty well, and I'm feeling pretty good so far. So <clears throat> I thought I'd uh, go ahead and address some of the things that Marshall brought up in uh, his many daily uh, videos. Um, one thing he was talking about chicken. Uh, do, do carnivores eat chicken? Um, I guess his wife was looking up uh, somewhere and somebody had said that they don't. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> they may not eat a lot of chicken, uh, I find when I become carnivore that 
chicken just is less appealing to me. Um, I don't know what it is about chicken and why we've gone so hard on the chicken in the last 40 or 50 years. I guess, you know, they wanted us to get away from fat. And chicken is one of those very lean meats, um, which, you know, that's uh, fine, I guess. But uh, one of the things that you really need in carnivore, because you're not eating carbs, uh, so you got to get your energy from fats. And so you need more fatty meat, usually, than what chicken is. Uh, chicken, uh, you know, it's fine and all, and I have it every now and then. But I mostly stick to red meat just because it's fattier and um, I just like it more too. I don't, I don't like particularly lean meats. They don't taste as good. You know, chicken, if you notice, if you eat it regular, you know, regular folks, when they eat chicken, they don't eat chicken. They eat breaded chicken. They eat chicken covered in all sorts of crap to make it taste good uh, or to make it taste better, I guess. I mean, it tastes fine, but, you know, it's just not as good as red meat is on its own. Red meat's just fattier and better. Um, and by the way, Marshall, yes, chicken is allowed in carnivore, but almonds? You mentioned having almonds in the first video, I think, or second. And yeah, our almonds are not animal products. Uh, I'll let it slide this time because I think you didn't think about it or you didn't maybe you were thinking you were still doing keto I don't know I mean keto they really go for it on the almonds um which is kind of good but also not so good because almonds have a lot of oxalates in them and uh, if you're eating almond flour and stuff like that like they do on keto you're gonna load yourself the freak up on oxalates which is not good for you so be careful uh Ketonians, keto eaters, keto eaters, be careful <laughs> eating oxalates because uh, it can be a little much. Um, Marshall also complained after a few days that he felt like he didn't have enough variety. He was trying to give himself variety by, you know, switching around with the meats. And um, I don't, I don't know. I don't get the complaint. I mean, for one. Uh, like I said to him when he was asking about it, you know, eventually you'll get over that. You'll be happy with what you've, uh, what you're eating because it's what humans are supposed to eat. It's what our body wants us to eat. And, uh, if you wait until you're hungry and then you eat when you're hungry, it doesn't matter what you eat. Everything that you eat will taste better way better because you are hungry. Uh, the phrase that I heard in somebody's video, which I think is great, is hunger is the best sauce. So just waiting until you're hungry is one thing that'll make, you know, nothing else will matter if you're hungry. Um, secondly, uh, there's lots of variety in carnivore. You can have all sorts of stuff. And really, it's not that different from what you ate otherwise, you know, generally in uh, most cases, people have a meat, that's their dinner, and then they just put some crap around it that sides, you know, but it's, you're still eating the same stuff, you're just skipping the sides. I think more likely what you're complaining about when you feel like you don't have variety is that you're not getting your dopamine hit from eating the carbs, eating the starches and the sugars that give you that feeling of, oh yeah, you know, those drugs, that's what the carbs are. They are drugs, as Robert Sivas says. Um, and yeah, that's what you're, what you're missing. You're missing that. And that is not a healthy thing. So, you know, it's not a good thing to be searching for that variety, really. Uh, you should just be searching for nutrition. And I mentioned to Marshall that, you know, eventually, and what you need to do with carnivore is learn to eat for fuel, not for entertainment. Get your entertainment somewhere else. Get your dopamine hit somewhere else. Because um, there are other ways to get it, 
And that's really what you're looking for. Go go out and do uh, stuff outside. Do things that make you feel good, things that you like, your hobbies, whatever it is. Find, dive into those more fully. Uh, now that you don't have to spend a crap ton of time uh, preparing a bunch of meals, uh, you can you can totally do that, and you can get your dopamine from that kind of stuff instead. And uh, that's really a good way to do it. Um, and the last thing that I thought I would address was Marshall did mention, you know, where he was, uh, there was, there, what was it, spaghetti squash or something like that. And he was thinking, oh, would a little bit of it hurt? Would it, would it really hurt to eat some spaghetti squash? And, you know, in, in the case of spaghetti squash and with a lot of vegetables in general, probably not. Probably not going to hurt to just have a little bit. No big deal. Uh, but it depends on what it is you're having a little bit of. If you're going to have a little bit of mm, potatoes or noodles or rice, uh, you know, that stuff seems like it should be pretty benign, but I can tell you from experience that none of it is benign. The second I start giving in to the, oh, can I just have a, this is a little bit, it won't be a big deal. That starts me down the slippery slope. I start sliding and sliding, and in no time, I am back to what I was before, and I'm a total carb addict. So it does depend, probably, on, on who you are and whether you're a carb addict or not. You know, do you really need to have those carbs? Are you so addicted to them that you can't give them up? If that's the case, then don't, don't have a little bit. Don't have the tiniest bit. Because the second you do, it's, yeah, it's fat. That slippery slope is really slippery. You'll be fast down there and, and uh, be drunk in the gutter in no time. <laughs> okay, that's a different addiction, but the, the equivalent of it. You'll be going out at one in the morning to find the Taco Bell to get yourself a, a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Because that's the only place you can get it. And, um, yeah. I was doing that before we started this. And, um, yeah, it's definitely something to watch out for. Okay, so that's the end of week one. I think we did pretty well. And I'm excited for how this is going. I think it's going to go pretty good. We'll see how week two goes, but... I feel super confident. I feel like I am on my way and nothing can stop me. And ah, I love the feeling. Uh, it, it really is something. I, I feel like I can do anything. Like I, it's time for me to start writing again and get going on that. Maybe I can start writing every day. Uh, and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm just super excited and, um, we're, I'm going to keep this up. I'll see you guys next week.